But the battery itself is going to be kind of revealed, taking the covers off. Some of you have seen the cover off, but really haven't seen the integral uh, components. As you know, it all is supporting the vehicle. It's our main purpose in life. The battery, which lies inside of the center spine of the vehicle, actually from the cup holders rearward and the T-pack back by the seats. Not only the battery is important here, but we also have our DC voltage cables that are important that connects to the power inverter, which does the managing of DC-AC. In the back of the vehicle, we have an auxiliary power module that's important to run some of the other electrical on the vehicle. And then obviously the charge port and the charge module, which we actually we uh, plug into the grid, goes in through the port, through our charge module, which uh, steps up or steps down, and then puts that into the battery and the charging. As we go deeper into the battery and take the cover off, there's a lot of stuff inside of here, and I want to spend, spend some time talking about that. Obviously, within the battery, there's a lot of electronics that are on board, uh, but most importantly is the cell. As I mentioned, L mentioned LG Chem is our cell supplier. This is one of the cells, or actually a couple of the cells split apart. These are three cells, and you can see we have thermal cooling devices. But the cell itself is a large version of what's in your cell phone. It's a lithium ion cell with a cathode positive side, anode negative side. And as we charge up this cell, put energy into it, you're literally moving that around from the cathode to the anode side, providing charge. And simplistically, we're moving those back to the other side, the lithium ion uh, molecules to the other side, and we're discharging that, and that's able to go out and be used for the propulsion system. The cells themselves are encased in a patented technology, which is a thermal cooling film. So we run heated or cooled liquid through one side of the surface, and it mates up to the cell itself, and that's how we exchange heat out of or into the cell. And this is repeated, we call them repeating frames, all the way through the individual modules. There's four modules, and then inside of those are different numbers of cells and cooling devices, uh, cooling fins. The coolant flows in from one side of the front. It's heated if necessary, or it's cooled already. Goes down one side, transfers over the cell, and then returns back out to our heat exchanger. You can see down at the bottom. Not only do we cool it, we also monitor, monitor it with each module having its own mo uh, power or electronics module that's monitoring the temperature, the current, and the voltage. And then as we're running those, we're individually balancing each cell to make sure the cells are at their optimum performance level at a pack level. So as the battery comes back together, it goes into the vehicle. An example, you plug it in. Many of you tried that, I think, last night or this morning. Probably saw it very easily with a standard uh, J1711 uh, interface. We charge the battery up. You drive down the road. And as you're driving down the road fully electrically, up to 100 miles an hour, uh, you're depleting the battery from full down to empty. Some of you I heard got into 40 miles of EV range yesterday. Hopefully uh, we had some here on Monday that got in the 50s. But as it moves down to the end of that, we keep a state of charge buffer at the bottom, and Larry will tell you why later. And then we switch on the internal combustion engine, becomes the range extending mode, and you're driving down the road using that uh, generation, power generation. 